Welcome to this committee meeting of the Public Utilities Committee of Columbus City Council. Uh, before we begin tonight, I want to thank folks that worked to prepare for tonight's hearing. Uh, first of all, uh, Public Utilities De Deputy Director John Lee, thank you for being here tonight with us. Also want to thank uh, Steve Gladman, who chairs the Sewer and Water Advisory Board, who unfortunately can't be here tonight for health reasons, um, but we thank him for his work this year, um, and he's chaired that, that board for a number of years, and we certainly wish him a speedy recovery uh, at home. Uh, I also want to thank members of the public for taking time to uh, be engaged on this uh, particular piece of policy and, and this, this committee hearing. Those are streaming online uh, as well to learn more about this process. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to review and comment on the proposed 2024 water and sewer rates for the City of Columbus and Central Ohio customers. Uh, we'll also discuss the department's payment assistance program for low-income residents and seniors who may qualify for reduced rates. Uh, this hearing is available to live stream on the CTV website, and the video will also be posted on the City of Columbus YouTube channel following this event. Uh, and with that, would love to turn uh, this committee hearing over to Public Utilities Deputy Director uh, John Lee to present the details of the proposed rates. Deputy Director, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, President Pro Tem Dorans. Uh, before I begin my presentation, I'd like to read a letter from our uh, Sewer Water Advisory Board Chairman, Stephen Gladman, on the board's rate recommendations. Thank you. Dear President Hardin and President Pro Tem Dorans, members of the Sewer Water Advisory Board, with members from the Department of Public Utilities met four times in 2023 to review and discuss the operations and project planning activities of the water, sewer, and stormwater enterprises. At our October 18th meeting, we reviewed proposed water, sanitary, sewer, and stormwater rates. The board approved the following rate recommendations effective January 1, 2024. For fiscal year 2024, the board recommends an increase in sanitary sewer rates of 5%, water rates of 5% and storm water rates of 1%. When considered together, the bill impact on an average residential customer within the city of Columbus is 4.2%. Overall, this adds approximately $10.16 in charges to a residential customer bill each quarter or $40.65 a year. For larger household charges, increase 15.91 cents per quarter or $63.62 per year. Over the past few years, the board has not raised sewer extra strength charges. In 2024, per our rate study, the board recommends an increase of 5% to our inside and outside BOD charges. No increases are recommended for TKN charges or TSS extra strength charges. The board recommends continuing the surcharge with the sanitary sewer rates known as the Clean River Fee. This fee supports payment of expenses related to construction of projects mandated by the consent orders entered into to eliminate combined sewer and sanitary sewer overflows. This charge is based on measured impervious surface areas. This equivalent residential unit equals 2,000 square feet of impervious surface area and each residential customer both inside city and outside city is billed one ERU per month. Commercial and industrial customers are charged based on actual measured impervious area. The board also recommends continuing the low-income discount for water and sanitary sewer commodity charges at 20%. Low-income customers are defined as being at 150% of the federal poverty level or qualifying for state low-income programs. The Department of Public Utilities is continuing its outreach efforts to identify customers that have not taken advantage of the low-income program. Lastly, the board recommends no increase for sewer and water capacity charges for 2024. The board feels that the rate adjustments are fair and equitable and are necessary to provide the funding and support, the day-to-day -day operations of the division, as well as continued, continuing to support a critical and sizable capital improvement program within the Department of Public Utilities. As always, the board will work with the public utility staff to ensure that future rate increases are minimized to the extent possible. If you or other council members have questions or would like to discuss these issues, feel free to contact me at your convenience. Thank you. President Pro Tem Dorans, I'll continue on with my presentation uh, for the utility rate increases, just to highlight some additional information um, from what I talked about from the letter presented by the board. First off, we will move into some of our rate setting goals and assumptions. I'd like to set the stage just to inform council of, of why we do, why we're increasing rates and what's behind that. 
Obviously, it's to cover our O&M expenditures, operations and maintenance expenditures, anything from personnel to services and supplies, but also uh, in large part for our capital improvement program. That's really what drives a lot of the rate increases year over year. For 2024 to 2029, we're looking at a $5.4 billion capital improvement program. Part of that program inc includes the construction of our fourth water plant and associated transmission line and several updates to our southerly wastewater treatment plant. We strive to maintain certain reserve levels and operating cash balances and various financial ratios we're also focused on affordability. What's the impact to customers, residential customers and commercial customers? And as in the past, we are required to comply with various regulatory requirements. And as well as uh, bearing in mind, keeping in mind all the regional growth in the area and the needed infrastructure uh, to serve that growth and have that capacity. So in summary, as mentioned, the overall rate increase to an average household is 4.72%. That will equal, if we look at 17 CCFs, which is the average consumption over a quarter, that includes a, about a household of uh, two and a half residents within that household. The imp increase on a quarterly basis will be around $10.16 or annually around $40.65. That increase is close to what we are currently as far as inflation. Um, currently, right now in 2023, inflation uh, is running around 4%. 4 so we're, we're pretty close and in line with inflation at this point. Next, uh, just a little bit more detail on uh, breakdown of how the rates um, are structured inside, inside city Low, when we look at a low income customer and outside city. What we'd like to do here is show the difference between a household, uh, a, a average household consuming 17 CCFs and then also a larger household that's consuming 30 CCFs. You can see there that the ranges on the inside city annually range from an increase from $40.65 up to $63.62. Outside city customers, um, they are charged a bit higher rate. Uh, they are going to be seeing an increase annually from 45 uh, up to potentially $73 annually. Our low income residents that qualify for our programs receive a discount on their commodity charge. Uh, you will see their increase ranging from 34, close to $35 up to $53 annually. So in summary here, as far as our rate increases, these are across the board. Um, and they apply across the board to residential customers, commercial customers, master metered, and multifamily. We are doing some changes to our extra strength charges, as mentioned, specifically to our uh, BOD, biological oxygen demand charges, but we're not increasing some of our other extra strength charges, TKN or TSS, in accordance with our, our rate study. No increases into capacity fees, as mentioned, and right now we are undergoing a cost of service study. We usually do that every two, two to three years, and we are undergoing a required affordability analysis to gauge how our capital improvement program over the next few years really impacts customers, taking into account not only sewer, but also water and stormwater costs as well. How do our utilities stack up to everybody else's, uh, you know, rent, mortgage, all those other costs that, that consumers have. Uh, you can see there a breakdown of the revenue uh, as far as how much will be generated through these rate increases. Sewer is estimated to receive around 13 million water, close to 10 million, and storm a little less than 500,000 annually. On this slide, I like to show where we've been and kind of where we're headed with our rate increases based on our projections. You can see there from 2004 up to 2008, that was when we entered into our consent order. And so we had to increase our rates pretty significantly. Um, and then over time, we can see that they were been tapered down. Uh, we worked closely with our partners at Ohio EPA, uh, and we've got a very good relationship with them where we're able to achieve a low income, low, di low, low interest rates through that program and defer payments um, after project completion. 
So what you can see here is in the future though, going beyond 2024 into 2026, seven and eight, that rates are increasing. Um, and we're estimating that in those peak years around 2027 to 2030, that rates are estimated to be on aggregate around 6.63% compared to today. A little bit more looking at an annual increase in those years of around $87.58. I like to show this slide here too. Um, sometimes we get questions about if we, if we didn't have a rate increase, what would the impact be to customers? If we just took a pause in 2024, maybe even 2025, and we came back with rate increases in 2026, that would be a significant increase um, to, to customers, an aggregate bill increase, assuming that we maintain uh, our current financial targets and ratios and our capital plan does not does not, um, there's no change to that, that we would see uh, a bill impact and increase over 20%. That could impact customers to, to the tune of around $280 annually. A little bit of comparison data. Um, across the country, you can see here that um, we're, not, we're not alone and that wastewater and water utility bills have been increasing. Uh, the combined average water and wastewater bill year over year has risen around 5.34%. And those are really driven by the need to balance budgets, inflationary pressures, and capital needs uh, as cities grow and maintain their infrastructure. How we compare here in Columbus with some of our regional utilities I like to show here what we what it looks like if um, you know the C, 30 CCFs per quarter versus 17 CCFs per quarter. You can see here that Columbus is near the bottom um, compared to all these other regional utilities. We've been in this this bracket, this lower bracket, for many years. Likewise, um, at 15 to 17 per CCFs, same condition. Uh, and very much near the bottom, uh, right above Philadelphia. One area that I like to highlight is our senior and low income programs. Since in the past year, about around the last nine months, we've seen an increase of about 32% in our program. We have been pretty steady, uh, as you can see there on the chart, for many years, but we've made significant um, improvements as far as our, our efforts to increase program participation. I'll talk about that uh, in some more detail. Here is our senior discount program. You can see that um, we have not had too many additional uh, accounts added there, but we are trying to increase those numbers as well. What we've done in 2023 is we really, again, focused on increasing participation. We've seen numbers increase for those eligible, go from uh, 4,302 up to 5,669. We're still working with multi-units to get them signed up, and we have recently partnered with Impact Community Action to get folks signed up through HEAP approvals. If, they're, if they go to Impact and they're eligible for HEAP, they're automatically eligible for our program. So we've got a good partnership with them to really kind of fast track uh, customers into our program there. As you recall, uh, through the dollars we've been given through the ARPA assistance through the city, we've been able to provide a, a credit program. In 2023, we provided a credit program of $60. That $60 uh, is uh, added to the account for all those that are eligible and currently enrolled in the low income and senior discount program. We're gonna continue that in 2024. We reached out directly to hundreds of customers to review their application status, to discuss with them why they were denied, and to help them get signed up and get the right materials in for eligibility. We've also done several efforts to really research where our potential customers are so we can target those areas. We've been out in the community. We've been looking by zip code. Um, you can see there on the the map there, some of the areas, those are the customers that 
um, are currently eligible and kind of some of the hot spots where we need to focus in on where some of the targeted areas are. So um, doing that, we plan, um, we've, we've done a lot of community outreach efforts in 2023. You can see there, uh, been on site at Colonial Village. Um, we've been out to several recreation centers and many Rise Up events to really promote our program. What we plan to, what we plan to do in 2024, again, is to offer the credit program of, of $65. Uh, that, again, to all low-income and senior discount members to offset that rate increase. We're also considering a new Roundup program. That's an innovative program that what we can do is uh, offer um, current customers the ability to, if they've got a uh, $95 bill, they can round up, round up uh, to $100, and that $5 would be um, isolated as part of this program to help to help families in need. Uh, that's been pretty successful in other utilities across the country, so we're, go we're plan to finalize that program uh, in 2024. We've also been working with a lot of other city departments, the Department of Development and Franklin County Auditor, to identify uh, affordable housing units and working with those developers to educate them early on as they build those units about how these the residents of those um, developments can take advantage of our program. One area that we really want to look at is multi-unit. Multi-unit and getting those customers signed up is, um, is, is difficult sometimes based on the metering structure, how the units are metered, whether it's a master meter or whether they're individually metered. And so looking at programs, really, how do you get those customers signed up? And some of the unique programs across the country are working with your other utilities that where they might get a bill, say in this case through Columbia Gas, you could add on the discount and work with them to actually add that onto that bill so they actually get those dollars. And with that, President Pro Tem Dorrance, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you, Deputy Director. Uh, normally this is where we would go to public testimony, but we did not receive any public speaker slips for this uh, committee hearing. Uh, I'll move into a couple questions I have at the department. But one, I, I did want to compliment the department on the front end of uh, something that we've talked a lot about as I've chaired this committee at council is that low income and senior discount program. I think there's more proactive steps happening today than there ever has been in the four plus years that I've chaired the committee. So I think that is a really positive step and I'm very glad to see. Uh, and the other thing, and, and you touched a little bit on your presentation, but certainly um, during COVID, I think the department did a uh, really good job of trying to partner with a number of different nonprofits for utility assistance to folks um, who were you know, economically impacted by the, the pandemic. And uh, that was certainly no small task to, to do. And certainly, I think some of the legacy of that work lives on and how aggressive the department is being right now and making sure that those that are... I, economically impacted by these rates uh, at the lower end of the, uh, of the earning spectrum uh, hopefully are impacted less by these programs existing. And uh, I certainly think it's uh, a great compliment to the department of how aggressive folks have been as far as trying to, trying to get that out there. So thanks for doing that. Um, one of the things that, and, I, and again, I think you've mentioned this in your presentation, is that because this is an enterprise-funded uh, department, so again, the water and sewer fees that we're here talking about today pays for the services, right? Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of capital expenses that go out to maintain um, you know, the, the actual system itself. Uh, I know one of those very large uh, expenses is, is maintaining not only what we have today, but also projecting you know, the growth into the future. And I wanted to know uh, if you could sort of share from the department perspective how uh, you are balancing sort of maintaining uh, these rates to be the, as low as possible while also maintaining the existing infrastructure, but also planning for the future growth that the city has. Uh, and that growth has taken place in a number of different areas of the city, uh, some of which have you know, had the right infrastructure in place, but other places that maybe has not had the right infrastructure in place to support that growth. So just wanted to know how, the, from a thought process standpoint, how we go about balancing keeping the rates as low as possible, uh, maintaining what we currently have, while also planning for the future. And I know that's sort of a three different questions all put into one, but uh, you know, I, I, I know you're up to the task. President Pro Tem Dorans, that's a great question. Um, 
you know, balancing the rates, when we look at it again, back to my statement on affordability and really looking at, you know, in our focus and our, our philosophy uh, is maintaining those rates, but at an affordable level. If we you know, get our, our capital plan really, again, drives most of our, our, rate, our rate increase needs, the debt service for those projects in the neighborhoods here in the city of Columbus. Yeah. And so, again, if we did not if we did not do a rate increase every single year, we would be, uh, we believe, impacting um, customers, you know, to the extent of potentially over 20% uh, if we took a pause. And so those continued investments, um, they are critical uh, in our community as we grow and as we need to expand capacity here in the city. Um, and really it's, it's an effort of, you know, collective effort within a department to look at, you know, what our needs are and balancing that out with our capital plan. Where are we investing? How are we investing in neighborhoods? Which areas um, are, are we targeting so we can provide as many capital improvements and infrastructure improvements citywide? Thank you. Um, one of the other things when we think about um, sort of, you know, certainly the, the growth of the city, um, one of the things that you mentioned in your presentation was the, the difference that we charge customers in the city of Columbus versus what we charge outside of the city. And um, what goes into sort of that, the, the calculation of what we charge, you know, our residents here in Columbus versus those that are in our suburban communities? How, how, you know, sort of what goes into that sort of calculation? Well, what we do is we start with, number one, this is a, a model that's, this model is seen throughout the country in, in many utilities as far as, you know, the difference between inside city rates and outside city rates. We talk about our, our talking about our customers and our, and our suburban communities. Um, and so what it, it's based on an industry standard model, cost of service studies. And so what those studies do, which we complete around every two to three years, is they really look at the cost to all customers and some of the variables such as where are we seeing these costs? Where are we seeing, you know, the treatment and pumpage and um, storage costs, things like that. What's really driving? And so we do see increased consumption out in the suburbs more so than we do see inside city. So all of those factors are incorporated in that cost of service study to help us justify those rate multipliers both on water and sewer. Um, and there's also, uh, as I have noted in the past, that really the inside city customers, um, I guess you could say, quote unquote, own the system. And there is um, an element of risk there that, you know, ultimately, it, you know, they are responsible, the inside city customers are responsible for paying off the debt. Uh, and so, that is another variable that goes into uh, that rate calculation. So you mentioned the again the the capital expenditures that it takes to maintain the current system, um, build it for the future. Obviously, we're in a much higher uh, interest rate environment than we were, say, one, two, three, or four or five years ago. Does that impact the ability from the department to again keep the cost low for the for the uh, rate payers, considering we do bond out? Um, you know our large capital projects? Inflation definitely does have an impact on, on the rates and, and our capital planning. Um, you know, there are certain areas, certain commodities that are more impacted by others, particularly with inflation. Uh, one example would be chemical costs, um, you know, on the water side. So we've got some operations of maintenance, maintenance costs uh, that we've seen um, increase, but we've also seen um, some other components, other contracts, such as uh, labor costs. Labor costs in some of our professional services contracts have gone up as people, uh, uh, as salaries increase and things of that nature. Also, various supplies. Uh, again, certain things are, 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 dr are commodity driven. So not everything is increasing, but uh, definitely in, in some areas. We've also seen on the project side, which is also incorporated into the rates as far as inflation is rising costs there, costs for materials that construction contractors are building into their bids. Again, also labor 
uh, that's another aspect, a, a large aspect of a construction project too. So um, we've seen those costs increase significantly in the last few years uh, since the pandemic. Um, Deputy Director, you, you know, I, you've already answered this question, but I, I like to ask it very directly every single year that we have this hearing, because if we have members of the public that are watching, um, you know, ultimately no one likes their rates going up. And we've talked a lot about why we do this on an annual basis versus holding it off. But if I'm, uh, you know, the average uh, Columbus resident, I say, hey, you know, the price of a lot of things are going up. Here's, you know, here's Columbus City Council talking to the Department of Public Utilities about raising my water and sewer rates. The, the direct question, just, just to say it out loud, you know, in your opinion, is this the lowest possible rate increase that can be provided to the City of Columbus customers? President Pro Tem Dorans, yes, it is the lowest rate increase that we believe. Um, you know, it's, we believe in our, in our philosophy is, again, to uh, charge and levy the lowest uh, responsible and reasonable rates that we can. There's a lot of effort that goes in to um, getting those rates low and, you know, communication with our board and discussion with our board and review of our capital projects, shifting of some capital projects. But again, delaying those types of capital investments and not investing, not reinvesting and not renewing those assets, you know, we could soon get way behind and then costs could increase even more. So. We try and maintain um, a steady program and um, you know, communicate to, to the public really what you know, the size of our capital program. I, I think there's a lot of unknowns about how big our infrastructure here is in the community and what some of our, our future needs are. Um, you know, in the future, as, as far as mentioned, was developing the capacity for future growth you know, we're, we're fortunate that we're experiencing large population growth and, and estimated continued population growth in the area and new businesses and new residents moving in, jobs, housing increases, all those require public utility services, all those businesses and folks require clean water. So we have to be cognizant and aware of the capacity needs and constantly modeling where we think we're going to be. So there's a lot that goes into the capital planning. Um, and again, maintaining some of those rates and those financial ratios, those are critical for not only, you know, um, um, <clears throat> our, our customers, but also the credit rating agencies. We go out and we finance these, these projects and those metrics are critical to maintain. And uh, my last question, it's a follow-up to that one, when we talk about the analysis that the department does about offering the lowest possible increase uh, to these rates. So I normally ask this question to Chairman Gladman, but unfortunately he's not with us here this evening. Could you just talk about what the Sewer Water Advisory Board is, who sits on it, and sort of what comes before them? Because I think if I'm a, you know, a resident sitting at home, I think, hey, here's Deputy Director John Lee saying, telling me it's the lowest possible rate. Um, Great, but is there any real public oversight that goes into that before it gets to Columbus City Council? So if you could just take take a moment and explain what that entity is, what it does, and I think why it matters for purposes of their review of this, again, prior to it getting to council. Absolutely. Our board is is established in city code uh, with members of those board of the board established in city code. We have multiple representatives across um, various sectors. We've got a commercial representative, industrial representative, low income representative, a senior representative from members that are not city employees. These are these are folks in the community that have perspective and bring perspective to the board. Um, we also have members, our city auditor, our city finance director, and city public utilities director are also uh, members of the board and voting members. So the board meets typically four to five times a year. A year. We review um, the water capital program and the sewer capital program. We review the operating budget, and then we have additional meetings as needed. We review the low income program, and then we have a summary of our rates. The auditor does a summary of you know where we are from a bond and note perspective. So 
what we do is we kind of frame um, to the board really what we're doing, why, why we're increasing rates, again, back to the capital plan, informing them of the projects we need, why we need them, what areas of the community we're investing in. So all of those things are taken into consideration um, as they review the rates. We look at the operating budget so they can really understand what our operations and maintenance expenses are, where we are making uh, efficiencies, and they look also at our revenue needs. So uh, from the culmination of that, um, usually in the fall of the year, they present a recommendation um, to city council. Thank you, Deputy Director, I appreciate that. Um, I don't have any additional questions, and I appreciate the presentation here this evening, and certainly um, the engagement of this uh, sewer water advisory board. Um, Again, thanks for members of the public that took the time to um, um, watch this hearing. Uh, again, I want to thank the Department of Public Utilities, Chairman Gladman, um, who's the uh, chair of the Sewer Water Advisory Committee, my staff, uh, the folks from the uh, city clerk staff, CTV, for their help putting uh, this hearing together. I um, want to commend, again, the board and the department for their work to keep these, uh, these rates adjustments consistent with prior years. Um, uh, to be able to do this while experiencing inflation and other factors is pretty remarkable considering when we're talking about, uh, again, a lot of the increased costs that we've seen uh, that affects, you know, virtually every function of this department. Uh, encourage those that are looking for more information to visit the Department of Public Utilities website at clums.gov slash utilities. Uh, folks can also reach the department by phone at 614-645-8276. Um, constituents, residents are always welcome to reach out to me individually. Um, our phone number here at City Council is 614-645-8201. Uh, or folks are more than welcome to email me at radorns at columbus.gov. Um, as they currently stand, ordinance number 3131-2023 uh, to enact new water rates, 3141-2023 uh, to enact new sanitary sewer rates, and 3142-2023 to enact new stormwater rates will appear for passage on our agenda at the next Columbus City Council uh, meeting held this Monday, November 20th at 5 o'clock. Uh, and with that, this hearing is adjourned. Thank you.